Hello and welcome to the show. I am here on Forza 6 with another autocross car build. Today I am going to be using one of the most requested vehicles for this series and that is the GMC Cyclone. Now this may on the surface look a little bit of a silly vehicle to be taking autocrossing. I actually reckon this might not be too bad. It is four wheel drive and it doesn't actually handle that badly. have seen quite a few fast ones around in uh, Forza lobbies and so on. This might not be too silly a, a choice. I mean, okay, it's not exactly as, as sensible as some of the cars, but uh, this might fare relatively well for, for an A-Class autocross car. Now, as far as engines go, I'm probably going to be sticking with the standard one, but it's going to very much be a case of uh, stick on the uh, the handling parts, and then we will uh, then we will see what PI we have left over. We get some lovely big tyres on this thing. Three two fives on the rear is massive for a four wheel drive car, and two eight fives on the front. Yeah, always, always quite nice. You may see various parts, probably most of the parts I think here are actually already owned because this was the Cyclone that I maxed out for a city car build at some point. Uh, Alright, so we will go, of course, again, all of the handling parts that we can get in here. Uh, Weight-wise, it's, uh, it's not quite as heavy as you perhaps think. It starts off at about three and a half thousand pounds. I'm hoping with the weight reduction in here, we can get it down to a, uh, a relatively sensible level. There you go, three thousand pounds-ish. That's, that's pretty good guy. Can't complain too much at, uh, at that. While we're here, shall we go stick this stuff here on as well? Might be able to get it just maybe fractionally under three thousand pounds with exhaust and so on. Right, so we are now some of the way through B class. The engine options for this vehicle, we can have the 5.7 litre V8 that goes in just about everything, the 7 litre Hemi that uh, is incredibly heavy, or the NASCAR, we can't have the NASCAR engine because that puts it well into S class. Um, I think we're just going to stick with the standard engine. To be honest, I don't think we need to worry about going for uh, any any of the upgraded engines so we will go through here and uh, stick in this stuff as well gearbox clutch and drive liner we'll put in a diff just for good measure yeah i think we will probably be getting the weight down to under three thousand pounds which is pretty good going for uh, for a pickup truck there we go right to the engine there. Now, I'm going to hazard a guess we're probably going to need... I was expecting that to add a bit more power to it, I will be honest. We're probably going to need to go... Here we are, probably, I suspect, going to need to get uh, camshafts in to get it up through the class. I'm hoping... The, do we have to go... We'll have to go turbo. We're going to have to go turbo. Never mind, so we will be able to get more than enough power out of the engine. Uh, f do I go for turbo or camshafts? I'm not, I'm not entirely sure which is the best way to go. I'm going to stick on all the little parts uh, kind of around here now. I uh, should probably go find the light ones as well while I'm doing this. Let's go stick that on there. Uh, I think we're going to stick with stick with camshafts for now on the uh, on the cyclone. Uh, yeah, what we'll do is we'll go stick with this on here, and then we will stick a flywheel on. That works for me. Okay, 420 horsepower, four, near, near enough 470 foot-pounds of torque, so power and torque pretty good. It is a little bit of a heavier vehicle, 2,900 pounds, so there's small fear of understeer perhaps from this. One thing I did notice, 0 to 60 time, 2.9 seconds. That's good acceleration, that's, that's, that's really very, very good acceleration in, in this vehicle. Okay. It's yeah, it's an interesting one. This I'm thinking. I'm still. I'm still thinking. This could be. Could be pretty damn quick. So here we are at the Hockenheim circuit, ready for my three attempts through the autocross course. Our current target time is a 205.6, set by the Volkswagen Beetle. And I'm not particularly expecting the Cyclone to challenge that. That is a ridiculously, ridiculously fast time. Uh, perhaps a better target. We maybe see it look at trying to beat the Escort. That's the, the current fastest four-wheel drive car, 2075. I mean, it's all going to come down to just how well this car drives, though. I, I really am not 100% sure what to be expecting from this, uh, from, this, from this vehicle, other than it's going to have, I suspect, pretty damn good acceleration. Uh, in uh, in in here, fingers crossed. It has got plenty of control though to go with all of uh, all of that acceleration. 
And it's not too bad through the uh, through the first gates and then get it stopped. The brakes, we may have another car that doesn't quite have the, uh, the most fantastic of brakes simply because it is that bit heavier than a lot of the vehicles. Oh, we did clip a gate on the inside apparently. Uh, I thought I got away with that, but uh, we have to obviously leave a little bit more space. It's a little wider than perhaps I am uh, expecting from the from the cyclone. It's certainly not too bad around here. The back end is uh, now. I definitely, I definitely clipped that one. That was me trying to get uh, trying to turn it a little bit too soon. Oh yeah, we do not have the brakes for that bit there. And oh, get off the grass. It's not a fun place to be in. Can we be flat through here? No, no, we can't. Not really. I think there is a little bit too much in the way of understeer. I am clipping a lot of these. I, again, I didn't think I'd clip that one. And in the rearview mirror, the barrel hadn't fallen over, so it must have been the tiniest, tiniest of touches. Uh, we're going to need to leave these gates just a little bit more space. This is slightly wider than I am uh, <laughs> currently thinking it is. I was expecting a little bit more in the way of acceleration as well from this uh, from this truck. It wasn't particularly fast down that back straight. Yes, I did have to have a little lift through the uh, fast corner, but uh, even then it was only just over 100 odd miles an hour. We've seen cars getting up towards 120 down there, and I would have thought with this thing's acceleration, perhaps we would have seen it quicker down that part of the course. Go through the tunnel though, no problems. Again, jump on the brakes down here. Uh, we shouldn't be not too bad through here. I can just kind of blip the throttle to get enough understeer to get it to around the RC RC gate. It's got a little bit more turning though than we saw from the uh, from the Mercedes, which is quite <laughs> which is quite nice. We do have a little bit more front end grip, and you perhaps expect it considering the size of the bloody tyres that we've got going on with this cyclone. A nice straight line up towards this last section. We may struggle through these really tight gates potentially with the cyclone, Oy, and then the back ends wanting to come around and say hello. I didn't actually see how many gates I missed. I think I missed about three gates, possibly. Um, so, 15 seconds time penalty. It's a start. It's a start with the, uh, with the Cyclone. Right, on to our second attempt. Got to... Got to make sure we remember the width of this vehicle. A couple of uh, a couple of slight clips on uh, on some gates. So yeah, remember the width of the cyclone, and then we are all good. Hopefully, at uh, at least try and find some time wherever wherever I can around here. Uh, having four wheel drive is nice. Being simply able to just boot it out of every single one of the corners. Although on the most part of the cars, we haven't really had too much of a trouble. Uh, we've got to be really quite slow through that section. That is not particularly fun. We, surprisingly, I'm saying this, oh, I was kind of expecting a bit more understeer there. Um, we don't actually have that much in the way of in the way of rear grip for the high speed change of direction. We have plenty of traction, you know, we're not spinning the wheels up because we're four wheel drive, but through these fast gates, the back end is more than happy to sort of wiggle its way around, which is not quite what I was expecting from the side. I was expecting to have more understeer through these high high speed gates, but uh, no, the back end is happy to uh, cause a few a few problems. Managed to save it, but uh, yeah, that I would rather it doesn't do that on the uh, on the next run. And we can get it nicely out of some of these gates. I mean, even if we take a slightly like a slightly compromised line at some point, because it's four wheel drive, you can just boot it and you can let all of the power and the torque. That kind of gets you out of a hole a little bit. Uh, of course, you can't be too stupid, but uh, you can get away with a little bit more, perhaps with uh, with this. Yeah, the brakes. Uh, the brakes are okay. They're no, they're not dramatically worse than some of the vehicles we've had recently, but they're certainly not as good as the likes of the Beatles and whatnot. And let's face it, it's not exactly surprising. This is a thousand pounds heavier than a lot of the fast vehicles. God, ah, <laughs> uh, they're, they're, I'm getting these very, very slight clips. Like the barrel's not even wobbling in the rearview mirror, so I must only be touching it by about a millimeter through some of these. It might even be the front splitter on this that's causing. Uh, causing a couple of issues and we round up towards this uh, this final section make sure we get it slowed down enough for these we can't really fire the car out of the gates just yet because we don't quite have the grip it's going to be across the line 219 with uh, with 10 seconds worth of penalties that's you know we're, we're looking at perhaps getting it under the 210s that's pretty good going for the uh, for the cyclone again 
on to our final attempt with the cyclone. Got to remember how wide the truck is. It's always useful for uh, getting through the gate. Yeah, it can't be doing with those uh, those silly little clips on uh, on some of these. And yeah, see if I can make up any time anywhere else around the course. It feels pretty good overall. It's uh, yeah, just got to be got to be a little bit careful. While the traction is good, the actual rear end grip in general isn't fantastic. So through sort of this gate here, I'm actually quite scared of this truck through here. The back end is really happy. I mean, that's quite slow through that gate and it's just on the limit through that part there just really isn't that much in the way of rear end grip so I don't feel like I can really push the truck through that section I mean that was 95 miles an hour we have seen vehicles doing 100 I think about the Beetle about 114 through there so yeah it's uh, the, the lack of rear end grip again through that section the back end is really wanting to uh, to come out and wiggle around have to have a little lift a little bit better for speed down there I was trying I, I got I, I went for bravery tried to get it flat out and kind of deal with the understeer almost almost worked I just had uh, had to have a slight, slight confidence lift. But then when you do take it flat out, you get more speed. You have to go earlier on the brakes further down because this thing does not get stopped fantastically, uh, fantastically well. It does do pretty well though, sort of through these through these narrow gates. Again, that four-wheel drive traction really helping it get out of the uh, twistier sections because it can't take the same speed through the gates as you know the very small, very light cars. As I said, you know, we're talking a thousand pounds heavier than a lot of the very, very quick vehicles that have uh, that have gone around here. So you know, it's not massively surprising. It's almost double the weight of the uh, the BAC Mono. It's you know not surprising that uh, we can have the the odd issue getting it through some of these narrower sections. Right, we're out of the hairpin. Just a few more corners to go. It definitely has definitely has more grip than we got from the Mercedes. That was one of those gates there was really close to uh, to ending in disaster. Oh, get it around here, and then we've got this final nasty little wiggle towards the finish line for the Cyclone. Put the power down. Make the most of that four-wheel drive traction. It's pretty good, 208.7. That is a, <laughs> that is not a bad time at all from the Cyclone. The strange thing is, it doesn't actually feel that fast. You know, the Mercedes that went out last time did a, did a 212. That felt quicker than this Cyclone feels. But the Cyclone is pretty damn quick around this course. I thought this might um, might throw up a decent time, and it certainly does. Got to be, got to be wary that the rear, the lack of rear end grip through the high speed sections is not what I was expecting, and a little bit on the scary side, I'll be honest. Uh, of course, traction isn't an issue, being four wheel drive, you can fire it out of the gates very, very well. But the high speed change of direction, the rear does does kind of want to let go, and there is certainly some understeer to contend with as well. But the the uh, the, the eight point seven will put it in to fifteenth place. It's only half a second down on the Honda NSX. It is just over a second down on the Escort Cosworth. It's you know that's a decent that's a decent time from the uh, from the Cyclone. Certainly, yeah, it's not up there with the very top with the very very fastest cars. But this is almost a three thousand pound pickup truck going up against tiny lightweight sports cars at an autocross course where it's all about handling a quick change of direction this does do very very well it does very very well around this course indeed got to be a little bit careful with it you can certainly get yourself into trouble trying to drive this quickly around here but uh, yeah i i do very much like it and uh, that is a, a decent time to go within half a second of that amazing handling nsx is pretty good going in a, in a vehicle as well that didn't feel massively i expected to have more exciting more dramatic acceleration almost from this from this truck it, it, it didn't feel massively fast but it still does go very very quickly around here Anyway, that is it for this video, guys. Thank you very much for watching, and until next time, uh, goodbye.